Are you tired of waiting for sparks to fly on your dating app? Do you dream of running through airports to deliver an out-of-breath, unplanned monologue? Then stop doom-scrolling and start listening to Meet Cute Rom-Coms, feel-good love stories that take you from chance encounter to grand romantic gesture in just 15 minutes. We're bringing rom-coms back. Get a brand new Meet Cute series on the first Tuesday of every month, with new episodes twice a week. Fall in love with Meet Cute Rom-Coms, wherever you find your podcasts. Is this where we kiss? Welcome to Girls Gone Hallmark, a Hallmark review podcast. I'm Megan, and I'm a longtime Hallmark movie fan. I'm Wendy. I'm your former Hallmark hater. Today we're discussing, wait for it, Haunted Harmony Mysteries Murder in G Major. Such a long title. We got to talk about it. From Hallmark Movies and Mysteries <laughs> channel. If you want to connect with us outside of the podcast, come find us, come talk to us, send us a message. Instagram, we are Girls Gone Hallmark, and we're also Megan and Wendy. Come on over to our Facebook group. Okay, I'll stop singing. I, I can't stand when I do that. Um, our Facebook group is great. If you are on Facebook, come and find it. It's facebook.com slash groups slash Girls Gone Hallmark. Guys That's... are welcome, too. Yes, we're the girls. We are the girls in the girls. And um, many of the guys in the group are some of the most engaged. So agree. I have follow up from a recent episode. Okay. In our countdown to Christmas preview, which if you haven't listened, it dropped late Friday evening last week. So go give that a listen on an unexpected day. You might not have been waiting for it. Mm -hmm. There is a movie from the countdown to Christmas season that is called heaven down here and it is um based on a song by the artist mickey guyton and in the episode one of us said oh do you know who that is and we said no and we moved on well someone commented on facebook Mm. and they were like um multi grammy nominated black country artist doesn't ring a bell and i said no it doesn't but then i went to listen to her spotify Mm -hmm. and She's got a beautiful voice. Mickey Guyton is a woman. Mickey Guyton is a woman. Okay. News that to was me. New to, news to me too. She has done collabs with Kane Brown, with Maroon 5. Give her Spotify a listen. So thank you for educating us. Yeah, good. Honestly, I, I when I heard Mickey Guyton, I was like, oh, this is some old timey the same thing. folk song. Sorry. But it is not. Cool. And if you like country music, which I do... I replied to the comment, like, it kind of tracks that I didn't know who this person was because I famously don't know who anybody is in the music biz. So it's a reflection on me, not on them. Mm. So that's the update there. Cool. Let's talk some Hallmark news and notes. Yes, ma'am. Breaking news. We are recording this on Monday morning. This episode is going to drop on Thursday. But as of last night, Sunday, the writer's strike has come to an end so exciting for them it's very exciting i saw some of our favorite hallmark writers nina wyman and julie sherman and tracy andrine were on zoom makes me so happy popping champagne yes i was like that is so cute and i i really was i'm a details person so i was sitting around thinking like what a sigh of relief but then also like okay now i gotta like get started again i don't think these people were like writing in their downtime I'm sure they were, Mm -hmm. but they got to sell this stuff. They got to get jobs. They got to get all these projects were put on hold. It's like you got to hit the ground running now. Yeah. But I'm excited for them. Okay. I have some Hallmark adjacent tea. Okay. I have started listening to a new podcast called Oldish. And I'm going to talk about this podcast in depth over on our Patreon when we cover Pop Culture Club. Which is next week. You can get a seven-day free trial at patreon.com slash Megan and Wendy. It's a good time over there. I wasn't trying to self-promote. I just wanted to <laughs> I was. To give you some backstory here. On this podcast, it is hosted by Brian Austin Green from Beverly Hills 90210. Yes. His current partner, 
Shauna Burgess. Is she a dancer? Wait for it. And Randy Spelling, Tori's Uh brother. Okay. I'm going to talk more about that on Patreon. What I want to talk about is the tea that was spilled. Did she dance with Trevor Donovan? Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. (laughs) She she, has not been asked back for this season. Okay. And she explained why she thinks that in in this conversation that she was explaining is that she alluded to having a terrible partner experience with her partner from season 29. She never named him specifically, but receipts indicate that it's Jesse Metcalf. Oh, no. She said things like, quote, I couldn't be alone with him. <gasps> yeah, I thought it was like, I was like, whoa, these are some allegations. Like, I don't know what the situation is. Well, Jesse Metcalf has responded and he says no comment. Oh, no. So I'm going to leave a link in our show notes to a People Magazine article all about it. But I was like, wow, I can't believe like. The tea is piping hot. It is, right? Well, I almost don't want to start talking about murder in G major, but. Oh, I got two more. I got two more great homework news and notes. Great. Holly Robinson P recently had major shoulder surgery, which is a bummer to have. But I realize she is not in any Countdown to Christmas movies. She isn't. What the hell? It's a bummer. I mean, maybe like not right now. Like she couldn't do anything right now. But Perhaps. like earlier this year, she could have. I don't know. She's just like such a hallmark staple, staple to me. It's yeah. like oh, she's missing. Listen to this. I LOL'd when I read this. Great American Family announced on September 18th that they have 20 Christmas movies this season with its first premiering on October 21st. Mm. All the usual Great American Family suspects will star, as well as a few homework regulars that made me go, hmm. Christopher Russell is in two movies for Gaff. No comment. This holiday. I just thought it was so weird. Yeah. But this is what... This is what really made me laugh. In a recent interview with Bill Abbott, he commented on how difficult it is to add diversity to their movies because, quote, we do a lot of production in Canada. <laughs> I don't even know why we're giving this man any airtime. I know. I, I thought it was so funny. I was like, All right, are you telling me there is no people of color in Canada? What? No. Excuse me? No. No. There's no gay people in Canada? Oh. There's no I mean, wheelchair users. Exactly. No. <laughs> He's like, we're trying so hard, but Canada makes it difficult for trying us. so hard, but we're homophobic and super racist. So yes. it's not easy. Oh, my God. I laughed. I will leave a link to it in our in our show notes. I'm going to choose to believe that many of those movies are acquisitions and these people weren't actively making movies that they knew were going to appear on GAF. A la Jodie Sweetin. Indeed. Yeah, she's got a movie maybe this week that came out. That she came out and said she was disappointed by that and she did not have that information when making the movie. Yes, and has pledged to donate any money she makes from that movie going forward to LGBTQ organizations. Yeah. I love it. Queen Queen Jodi Sweetin. Love it. Now we can move on to Murder in G Major. Let's hear a synopsis. Former orchestra conductor. Guys, I don't even want to say it. Brown. I don't even want to say it. Gethsemane. She moves to Ireland to teach at a boarding school. After deciphering a musical message, she meets a renowned composer's ghost who is rumored to be behind the death of his lover. Okay. Let's, let's hop into news and notes. Can I just say, like, there's a podcast that I listen to and... It's co-hosted, and one of the hosts is not a great speaker, and it drives me crazy, and I am that person. In my head, dude. This movie was based on the novel Murder in G Major, a Gethsemane Brown mystery by Alexia Gordon. It's the first in a series of five books. Do you think this is going to become a series of movies? Oh, let's talk about it in a minute. Okay. The script was written by Arthur Vandelay. He has no other writing credits according to imdb welcome arthur your ghost is freaking hilarious this was filmed on location in wicklow ireland which is south of dublin i just love ireland have you been to this area of ireland not wicklow but i've been to dublin and honestly 
I mean, don't come for me, Irish people, but lots of Ireland looks the same. But this is a beautiful area. It was very pretty. And mm. her house was like super cute. Loved it. Yeah. Um, of course, this movie stars Tamara Mowry Housley as Getz. Look, I'm just going to call her Getz because I'm not going to trip over her name the entire episode, okay? She has 36 X. Th- she has 36 acting credits, including most recently Dream Moms, which premiered earlier this year. Uh, noticeably absent from this year's Countdown to Christmas as well. Hmm. Restarred Cooper stars as Eamon. He's a comedian, writer, actor, and singer who has mainly worked on stage, but has been in several popular UK series such as No mm-hmm. Offense, Quiz, and Delicious. He has also acted in Christopher Nolan's acclaimed movie, Batman Returns. Batman Begins. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't tell you the difference between Batman Returns and Batman Begins. Nope, me either. Just that it stars Batman. <laughs> Adam Fergus plays Inspector O'Reilly. Fergus has 31 acting credits and it has appeared on shows such as Supernatural and Scandal. Welcome back, Marco Grazzini. He plays Griff. He has 49 acting credits, including Hearts in the Game. And right in front of me, he's also in 33 episodes of Virgin River on Netflix, which has been renewed for season six. Again, do I need to watch this show? It's entertaining. It's a little slow. Is this set in current day? Yes. Okay. I. I it's like a... I want to say Canadian. It's like a small town and a woman moves there. She's a doctor or physician's assistant. She's had like a tragedy in her own life and she moves there kind of to start over. And there's all these like small town characters and Marco Grazzini plays a bad guy on the show. I like it. Yeah. It's people say it's Hallmark adjacent, but it's like it's grittier than Hallmark. I need grittier. It's not Showtime gritty, but it's grittier than Hallmark. Okay. And there's, like, a lot of, like, love triangles, and it's an entertaining show. It's not fast-paced. Yeah, that's that's what I'm afraid of. Are you ready for first impressions? Yeah. This was giving me huge The Ghost Whisperer vibes, and I loved that show. I don't know The Ghost Whisperer. Get out. It was on CBS. It has Jennifer Love Hewitt in it. Oh, no, I never watched that. It's really good. Oh, I should see where it's streaming. It's really good. I'm actually going to look right now. You might think it might be too scary, though. There's some things, like some episodes that are kind oh. of scary. But it's really but good. it was on network TV, it right? It was on network TV. So how, how scary could it Not be? Not that scary. And also it has Aisha, is that her name? Uh, Tyler? I love her. It's on Hulu. Four of the seasons are on Hulu. Oh. Here's my first impression. Wait, how do you pronounce her name again? Dude. But that was so funny throughout the movie. No. Too much. Oh, okay. Funny a couple times. I have notes about it. I have notes about it. I have notes about it. All right. Let's talk about what we liked. Okay. Can I start first? Yeah. Of course I fell asleep watching it the first time. Yes. Of course I did. But when I watched it the second time, I thought it was really entertaining. (laughs) Yeah, me too. It wasn't as funny as I anticipated it was going to be based on the preview. Yeah, it's not constantly like a laugh a minute. No. But it has some funny moments. In fact, my daughter came in during the scene when there was like weapons. Oh, uh-huh. And she's like, this doesn't look like a Hallmark movie. And I was like, movies and mysteries, babe. This isn't the, this isn't the Hallmark original yeah, stuff. Um, we get real murdery over here. I loved the ghost. I thought he had the best lines in the whole movie. He when did. He says... You're standing in a literal triangle to Getz Mm -hmm. when she's like with her two dudes. It's great. I loved him. There was so much heart to his character and like the kind of loving role he got to play with Getz. I loved him and I loved that he came back briefly at the end. I have thoughts on that too. I mean, look, it's a talking (laughs) corporeal ghost. So we've got to suspend our disbelief a little bit. Fine. But I have thoughts. Okay. I liked that our leading lady was being pursued by two dudes. Mm. I don't see the chemistry between her and Griff. I just Mm. don't see it at all. But she and Inspector Riley, I thought, had some sparks. And shout out to Adam Fergus. His eyes. Whoop. He reminded me of Patrick Dempsey. Oh. Well, I'm also team Inspector O'Reilly. Oh, really? And here's why I like the love triangle in this movie. At first, I thought maybe Marco Grazzini's character Griff is the bad guy because we've got two love interests. Obviously, she cannot end up with both of them. 
And then I remembered where we were. We're on Movies and Mysteries where we want to create a franchise. Mm -hmm. We don't want to give everything away in the first movie. We needed to leave us wanting more. And so while I don't think Griff is her end game, I like the left triangle. I like the unknown direction we're going here. Did they explain why he was there in Ireland? I I don't remember either. I thought Getz was so great with the students. Mm. And at times there were shots where she had like full tears in her eyes that looked so believable to me. Mm -hmm. I just think she's a really great actress. Anything else you liked? Mm -mm. I really liked this movie. I loved the setting in Ireland. uh, You know, I don't want to lean heavily on the setting, but I like an Irish movie shot in Ireland. Mm. Looked like Ireland. Made me happy. Loved the old boarding school and her yeah. cool house. When it comes to a mystery series, which this isn't yet, but I think that's always their goal, especially right. when you're working on a novel that had multiple stories to begin with. I find the first movies can be a little bit challenging because there are so many characters. I know we're not in what we wished for, but... I think that's what makes the series so full in many cases. But in the first movie, it's like, I got to meet all of these characters. Yeah. And then I got to figure out who they are because there's some who done it here. Mm-hmm. And so I enjoy that richness of it. But it also is a little challenging for me. Mm-hmm. I need a spreadsheet of who all the characters are and how they're related to each other. That's interesting that you say that because I did have that note initially in my wish for. And then I got rid of it because... I was like, am I a dummy who wasn't paying attention? Like, there were, like, the two, like, kind of ex-juvenile cons, <laughs> yeah. right? And and then there was – who else? There was the fan, mm-hmm. the, the super fan, and then there was the doctor. But I did think, like, each of those actors kind of looked alike. Like, the two bad guys kind of looked alike. But then – I just didn't want people to be like, hey, dummy, pay attention to the movies. And then maybe um, you won't get so confused by the cast of characters. Yeah, I hear you. I didn't see the doctor coming. Oh, well, in my second rewatch, it was obvious to me. Oh. Because I had woken up at the end of the movie, like when she's like with the gun and all that stuff. And I was like, so I know who did it. I always find that ending moment that we get in these mystery movies where there's like a threat of violence. Mm. It's always so thrilling to me. I know. Because it's. Unexpected. We're just not familiar. I yes. mean, and we're not like, it's not I'm normal. I'm like, it's Hallmark and they've got a gun. Yeah. Scary. Marco Crissini was in this movie, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. I mean, how incredibly underused was he in this movie? I know. Like, the dude had 10 lines, maybe. Yeah. Justice for Griff. Well, I was like, okay, obviously they're going to set this up for future episodes, hopefully. But I was like... To me, the lead of this movie was the guy that played the ghost. For sure. A thousand percent. Right? Yes. And I felt like they promoted it as like Tamara Mowry and Marco Grazzini, you know. Mm. Dude was hardly in the movie. Mm -hmm. Which, whatever, fine. Like, he will be in future episodes, but. Yeah. Does this mean, okay, so it's a haunted harmony mystery Mm -hmm. is the series. I'm curious if the rest of the books are set in Ireland because Tamara and Griff are Americans living in Ireland for Tamara this job. Tamara and Griff. We have one real Excuse name me. and one character. Getz and Griff <laughs> are characters living in – Americans living in Ireland. Uh-huh. Then you've got the inspector. Are the rest of our movies going to be set in Ireland or could we see them relocating? I don't uh, know. I'm going to be sad to say goodbye if we have to say goodbye to Inspector O'Reilly. I know, but then, like, I feel like they're setting it up at the end when he comes back. uh, This isn't my, did you see that? But they've already said their goodbyes, Mm -hmm. right? She has said goodbye to Eamon and what was the one? Orla. Orla. They, like, move on. They're transitioning out of limbo to, like, wherever they're going, Mm -hmm. right? But then at the end, she's on the beach and here comes the ghost again who you think has passed on. And he's like, I've got some friends that would really like to meet you, which is great. Set it up. She's going to be the ghost whisperer in the other movies, right? Yeah. So I think if he's got a bunch of Irish friends, that they should continue the series in Ireland. I hope they do continue in Ireland. Is it his friends or is it like people he's met in the beyond that have friends? Yeah, like people that have unfinished business that they need her help with. Exactly. Just like Ghost Whisperer. Oh. Back to Marco. Did you see him come in so hot when she like pulls back the tarp on the truck to see like the 
potential weapon. Yes. And like Seamus comes out and he's like, what are you doing? Get out of there. And like Griff comes in like super hot and is like, get away from her. That that worked for you? No, I just was like, it was overkill. Oh. I just thought. I thought his character was overkill a lot. Like the first introduction we have to him is like, could you close the door because your friggin' one note on your violin was too loud? Yeah, I was like, oh no. And your door was closed. She played one note. I know. <laughs> Settle down. It's not like that hasn't always been a music room, right? Mm hmm Okay. Do you have any other wishes? Oh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Um, There's too much emphasis on Gethsemane winning the choir competition. Mm -hmm. The choir leader can only do so much if the students aren't talented. Like, they put, like, oh, we've hired this choir leader, and she's going to lead us to win the competition. Uh, that's not really fair. Mm -hmm. Like, she doesn't know what she's working with. She didn't recruit these students. Yeah. How much can she do in the span of a semester? Do you think they should have just had her come be a new teacher at the school? They, yeah, they just didn't need that. Like, like I'm here to lead the, the choir. Yeah. Well, I mean, the competition was fine because I think her relationship with her students was nice and seeing like her ability to communicate with them and find their hidden talents. I thought that was meaningful to the story mm -hmm. but they over and over like it's on the front page of the newspaper new choir teacher yeah. will lead us to victory like it's the small town football coach uh -huh. i thought that was unnecessary <laughs> and finally i'm sorry but i hate the name of this movie i had to look it up every single time it's too many words it's too hard haunted harmony mysteries it's too hard i can't i'm sorry it's not fair i just don't like it bugged me i'm crabby i just didn't like it you are crabby today and it's way too the long. harmony isn't haunted it's it's like mm, yeah the adjective is in the wrong yeah spot. got you um that's all well it's way too long for seo too so i'm just putting murder in g major on our, on our stuff on our stuff okay i have a huge list of did you see that wow i only have one so go first how many times must they have had to stop and start filming? Because do you know what it does in Ireland? It rains oh. constantly. And in fact, there's one point where you can see the sky and the sky's like black mm -hmm. in the distance. And they spend a lot of time outside and girlfriend's like always on her bike. And like a bike is a terrible mode of transfer <laughs> for Ireland because you're going to be wet. Like one time they're like, oh, it's going to rain. Put your bike in the boot. Linda Lisa is not credited as the director on IMDb, although I do believe that she is the director of this movie. And the in the Twitter account One Kiss Means Forever mm. tweeted, "How has it not rained in this entire movie? It's a very rainy place." And Linda Lisa responded, "Oh, it rained, believe me." Mm. So, anyway, I need some rain. It's not Ireland till it's raining on you. Got it. Tell me, your did you see that student, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan? Yeah, he wore glasses. And I could see a green light reflected in the lenses of his glasses. So the green light is either on the camera yeah. or something. I could see it every time they showed him. Uh, I was like, huh, that's funny. I need non-reflective lenses, Ryan. Yeah, dude. When Seamus had broken into her house and runs out, remember? Yes. Okay. He runs right past Eamon. And I think, dude could have totally grabbed him. And then I was like, oh, wait, he's a ghost. He's a ghost. <laughs> I'm such a dummy. Just watched him go by. <laughs> just watched him. I'm like, did you not? Uh, he ran right past you. Yeah, it was just. He did funny. smash Dr. Lady's fingers in the piano. He did. So he has some sort of like. Only in the piano. Yeah. Um. Did you watch this movie with subtitles? Oh, yes. So all the mispronunciations of her name that bugged you, they were so funny when they were spelled out in subtitles. When they would say, like, get Sammy and... Yes. yes I get agree some money <laughs> with that. I That is funny. Yes. But you just hated it. That it I thought it was too much. It's interesting. Like, I'm, I've never heard that name before. And it's interesting, like, an author who would write a book with a character with such a difficult name to say. And then I'm surprised Hallmark didn't change it. These are just sort of related tamara maori housley has a red string yeah. on her wrist did yeah. you notice i even yes did you google too like is she kabbalah but i don't think she is no i found an article from her blog actually um that gave the origin of the red bracelets it is not related to kabbalah uh, instead it holds a special significance in her family as it was introduced by her grandmother the grandma would buy like red yarn and then like bless the yarn and then give the bracelets to 
people in Hmm. their lives. And according to their tradition, you wear the bracelet until it falls off. And when it falls off, it's believed to bring you good things. Okay. And she even, this was like a blog post from many years ago. She had like a little newborn baby and he had one on too. Oh. Yeah. So like it's like a thing in their family. Okay. Finally, when Gethsemane, did I say it right? You did. She's handing over the ring to Eamon, and you can see she has a tattoo here on the inside of her wrist that has has makeup on it. Oh. And I was like, oh, that's – because it was almost kind of like raised. I could see that it was covered with makeup, but I could see the also, also the tattoo raised under the makeup. And I was like, I wonder what it says. So, of course, I looked it up, and apparently she and her twin sister, Tia, have matching wrist tattoos – it's a French word. Jumels, J-U-M-E-L-L-E-S. And what does it mean? Well, this is what the article said. It said that the literal translation means binoculars, but it also means twins. Uh, binoculars. Yeah. You ready to rate? Yeah. Four stars. I gave it 3.75. That's good movie. I'd watch the next one. Me too. I was... I was Truly interested in, like, the mystery part of it. I loved, like, yeah. the ghost element. Yeah, and I loved, like, we don't believe that Eamon would have done that to Orla. Yeah. And I loved the ghost, too. And I like that we might see that continued. Obviously, it's a haunted harmony mystery. We're going to mm-hmm. need more ghosts. Did I thought it was really funny when she goes, this is so, I don't know why I'm not mentioning this now. When she goes in to meet the super fan and the super fan's like, you're from a podcast, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Hey, join us next week. We'll have special guests on the podcast, Eric Rutten from Hallmark Mysteries and More podcast on Tuesday discussing Love, of course, part of our fan favorite fall movies series. So give that movie a watch to prepare for next week's episode. And in the meantime, leave us a review. Five stars, if you please. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.